What's up YouTube? It's your boy Josh Reese back at it again with another video. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe and we'll get into today's video. Today we're going to be talking about the OAT uh, and steps you can take to demolish that test. Um, that you can absolutely do the best that you can and make sure that you can get a high enough score that any and every optometry school will consider you hands down. I know that um, that was one of my biggest anxieties, worries about applying to optometry school was getting a good enough um, score on the OAT. And I know that um, my friends and I and my study group were so nervous about it, but uh, we all did so well and got into every school we applied to um, because we followed these steps. Um, and you know, if, even if you follow most of them, there's a, a few people in my study group who didn't, but we all got a great score and were able to get into great schools. So. Step number one, you got to take your prerequisites. Um, don't go into the OAT blind. Now it's okay if you haven't taken every class that'll help you on the OAT, but make sure you have at least taken um, um, a few biology classes, one or two, um, college level, of course. Um, honestly, some of it's high school level, but um, you know, make sure you take biology. Make sure you've taken both physics classes. Um, make sure you've taken both chemistry classes, both organic chemistry classes, um, anatomy and physiology. Now, and if you, if you can take a math class as well, like statistics or um, calculus, it doesn't rely on math, uh, college level math per se, but it's still good to have those um, reasoning skills with you. Now, the reason you want to be able to have taken all these classes is because it'll help you out a lot. Um, although there's not a ton of points associated with um, deep understanding on a lot of these materials, like, you know, the theory of relativity you learn about in physics too, you know, that's, there's not going to be a ton of points on that or um, um, some of the anatomy and physiology kind of stuff. But having a good, solid understanding, you know, a college class under your belt in every single one of those um, situations, in every single one of those classes and subjects will help you so much um, in at least studying and preparing for the OAT, knowing that you have all your bases covered. Now, the, the next thing you're going to want to do is grab on to some study materials. Now, for study materials, you want a book you can study from that has practice problems. Now, whether or not that's just, you know, getting crack the OAT online or getting a Kaplan study book. I personally had a Kaplan study book. I think every single person in my group had a Kaplan study book, but um, it's not just about reading through it. And you want to make sure you read through um, as much as you can, really. But it's about doing the practice problems and having somewhere that you can go to look for the answers. So great thing about the Kaplan study book is it breaks every subject down into its different parts. Anything that could ever be tested about anything on the OAT is in that book. And if you have done every single practice problem in the Kaplan book before you take the OAT, you're going to feel so prepared. Some of those questions are gonna feel so easy because you've seen everything and are prepared for everything that's out there. Now, I personally didn't, um, and I could have been a little bit more prepared, but the preparation that I did do, uh, I'm so grateful for. And um, that Kaplan book really helped me out a ton. Now, the next thing you're going to wanna to do uh, once you get a hand on a book is get your hand on a study group. I know you might be at a smaller college where there's not a lot of people taking the OAT with you, but find some people online if even um, who are taking the OAT or DAT, you know, they could, they could be taking the MCAT, they could be taking the DAT, but people to go over these subjects with. I know um, in my study group, we had some people who hadn't taken the second part of physics, some people who hadn't taken the second part of OCHEM. Um, some, actually, I don't think any of us had taken anatomy or physiology yet. Um, wish I would have. But um, you can walk through these problems together. You can um, fill in the gaps of understanding together as you study in, in study groups. Um, I've mentioned this before in another video, but the OAT is not looking to 
um, see how well you understand all of this information. These are just topics that um, the information is bound to. Um, they're not really looking to if you know all the parts of the body. They're just using that, um, that subject of biology, you know, anatomy, to um, ask you a question to help gauge how good of a doctor you're going to be. Um, so all of these questions are really about having the right mentality going into it. Uh, being able to problem solve, being able to um, know which answers it's not right off the bat and have a good guess of what answer it is. So that way you can bridge the gap, um, you know, in your mind, be able to critically think, think on your feet and, and ace those problems. Um, so what, what a study group will do to that is you might not be able to approach a problem uh, as well in, let's say, quantitative reasoning. Um, but they might not be able to approach a problem as well in biology. So you can help them have the right mentality for biology. They can help you. And as you do more and more problems together, the more you'll both be able to get right. Um, so I'd say spend time in a study group. Don't just talk about the subjects, but do problems together in your study group. Now, the second to last thing I'd say is I want you to be able to have practice exams under your belt. You want to have taken as many practice exams as you can. I know there's one f um, free one on Kaplan that um, you just go to the Kaplan website and it's, it's, it's there, it's free. Um, and there's also a few other ones you can find online. Um, best thing you can do though is when you study Kaplan material or crack the OAT, they have study uh, practice exams on there as well. Um, I'd say uh, what I'd do is before I study for the OAT, I'd have you take one. Know what you don't know and know going into it that, oh, if I didn't study at all anymore, I could still possibly get this score. Now that helped me out a little bit because I think I got a 300. The first time before I studied, I took a practice exam, I got a 300. And I said, oh, wow, that's average. I'll, I'll be able to do well, um, you know, but after a few weeks of studying, I took another one, probably should have waited a little bit longer, and I got a 290, and I was so upset. I was like, oh no, the studying's not gonna pay off. But some practice exams are just harder than others. But um, every practice exam you'll take will expose you to new materials, expose you to what you don't do well enough yet, and know what you need to study, what kind of problems you need to study, what surprised you on the exam. So take practice exams. Take one at the beginning and take two or three or four, uh, as many as you can uh, leading up to it. I'd say um, have at least three months. Um, longer is better if you can do that, but have at least three months of hard study before it. Um, whether or not that's taking off school to study for it, I know a lot of people do. I personally didn't do that. I would just um, have school study at night. Um, but have at least three months of hard preparation for it because your future self is going to thank you. You know, um, I, I would have liked to have put in more effort, but I still was able to put in enough effort to get about the 90th percentile in every single section. So you just need to make sure that you put in enough effort that your future self's not going to look back and say, ah, if I would have just done a little bit better on the OAT, I could have gotten into this school. So... Um, uh, take those practice exams. Now, the last one I'd say is don't freak out. I, I really freaked out before the exam. I did not get a good night's sleep. I, um, you know, the whole, I think two or three days, uh, I was just kind of anxious, stressed out of my mind. My wife was like, oh, man, what's happening with this guy? I just uh, did not have the right mentality going into it. Um, if you've taken... Um, a standardized test like that it's kind of the same environment right quiet um, but you just need to, to know it's gonna be okay um, you, you've done what you you can and up to that point you you've you've done it you've made it this far you've gotten into college you've studied those classes you've passed those classes you're a good optometry applicant and even if you get a below of average score which you're not if you follow these steps you're gonna destroy the OAT um, but even if you get a below average score, um, you, you're going to be the type of applicant that can make up for it 
with GPA can make up for it for extracurriculars and for the type of optometrist you will be and the person you are. So, um, you know, good luck on that. Um, biggest takeaway from this video, st study for a long time and study in a group. Um, and just go over practice problems, practice problems, practice problems. All right, see ya, bye.